Hey everyone, and welcome to the best of three Call of Duty esports podcast. I'm your host, Josh. Salvation League to my right is Bash on Scorpio 3, and to our farthest right, per huge, is Rex, Shady, Nero, and my oh my, we have a lot to talk about today. Not only do we have the Elite Series, the Challengers Cup, not only do we have to talk about league play and what's going on with that. But we also got to do our full predictions every single matchup for the mm. first event of the Call of Duty season. Mm. We're going through it all today. And we got I Hold Shift on the podcast the today to talk challengers, to talk elite series and everything else. It's going to be a good one. But before anything else, guys, I've got to ask, boys, what's going on? Well, Josh, I am feeling like a baby wipe who has just, I've been gently placed on the back of the toilet and I'm not feeling so good about this. And all of a sudden somebody comes into the bathroom and I'm like, Oh no. Oh no. Uh, They decide to pick me up, take me to their desk and use me to clean their hands and clean their keyboard. And I'm thinking to myself, this is a worthy cause. (laughs) And I am feeling so good. Of what so you good. just avoided. Wow. Oh. What a time to be alive. Wowzers, Man. wowzers. Sam, how you doing? Good. I use baby wipes for different than that. Oh, no. Well, I mean, it's the way. Let's be honest. The amount of poop that have <laughs> oh, I've cleaned no, up. Oh, man. <laughs> my kids. Oh, my goodness. We got a lot to talk about. Definitely not that. To talk about today. <laughs> uh, but before any of that, of course, you can listen on Apple Podcasts. You can listen on yes. Spotify. You can watch on YouTube. You can drop you sure a comment can. down below on YouTube. And you can drop a, re- sure can. Or a review. Sure can. A five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Only and today, we're reading one from Vinster who says... Five stars. Best quote of all time. This is a throwback from a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Pokimane is the leader of simps. <laughs> Five stars. But you were Rex. <laughs> that was that. you, wasn't it? And then uh as well, as well, Nokio5 says the goats, five stars, work in the construction industry with oh. an unhealthy addition to competitive COD. The boys come mm. in clutch every single week, making my work day fly by. Just Good. wish this podcast was twice a week. Thanks, boys, for the content. Mm. Let's go. Thank you, Noki, man. my man. So, like I said, man, before we get anything else, I've got to say. We got to thank Draft Buff, and we got yes. a big Ooh. announcement today. Oh, my goodness. The Listener League. This whole week, we've been going through it, mm-hmm. getting insane submissions for the Listener League, and we got some good ones today. So, wow. So, if you don't know what Draft Buff is, mm-hmm. it's a fantasy Call of Duty app. If you know what fantasy football is, then you're in luck because then you're going to know what fantasy Call of Duty is. So basically, mm. it's as straightforward as that. You can join in season long leagues where you draft teams, or you can do draft royales, which are like DFS, where you have a budget and you have to pick teams based off the budget each for each home series and every event in the majors. And that can be a season long competition. And you can join the community draft royale down below as well if you missed out on signing up for the Listener League. So uh, make sure to join the Community Draft Royale to compete against myself and all of us mm-hmm. in that. And, uh, you know, try your luck against us because you're going <laughs> to need it. Sheesh. But my word, obviously, I we are honored to announce the winners tonight. So yes. I don't know. Sam, do you want to take it yeah. away with who won? Who are the official competitors in the BO3 season long Listener who- League? Who are enemies we're going to stomp into the Enemies ground. this week. Do you want to start with the creative winners or with the three random winners? Let's start with the random winners. Okay. Random. Lee Drawn. First. Woo! At underscore OG Cecil. My Woo! man. Congrats, OG Cecil. Second. At Alex underscore 97201. Oh, you my are word. Second in line, sir. Mm. Congrats. Well, And then third. We have at Bandify. Oh, Bandify. With two Ys at the end. Wow, he made it? Mm, so, welcome, Bandify. What a snake. So three <laughs> people. Yes. And now we had some two. We had some. We had some honorary. Very good creativity. Create, creative, creative entries. Entries is what I'm trying <laughs> to say. English is hard. Yeah, 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 yeah. We had a few really good ones. And first... We have at Layton JC. 
Oh, Woo! welcome, yeah. Layton JC, with a fire hype yes. video. Wow! Mm-hmm. If you haven't checked it out, check it out right now. Oh my word! You te- you definitely should. It, I think, it brought a few tears. It did. It did. Mm-hmm. It got me pumped, man. Yeah. Second and our last fi- finalist, I guess our you say final final competitor, competitor is mm. at. Snuppalupagus. Snuppalupagus. With an amazing poem. Yes, yes dude. Yes. That incorporated all three of us, which if you haven't read it yet, you should do that as well. Yep. But those are our winners. Congrats we'll to the be creative ones. season long. We'll be DMing you guys the about ones. the draft yes. date, which has to happen in the next two days. It so does. that is something to consider here. Yeah. Be prepared. Um, so definitely be prepared for that. It's going to be a mm-hmm. good one. And we are looking forward to it. So watch out. Check your DMs. Check the DMs. Because if you don't reply by we're tomorrow. We're sliding into them. Because we're going to already have replied to you by the time by this thing comes out. out. So, yeah. so, well, so better hey, three you better reply. Twitter is going to be so, replying. So hey, hey, future right? you, check your DMs DM. before this comes out. If. Yeah, I mean, literally, yeah. you better reply. <laughs> All right, boys. So, um, last thing, who's one player this weekend that you would love to have in fantasy Call of Duty? Who you think might just dominate this year or this weekend in the matchups they got? Who's, who's the one that comes to mind for you? Rex, does one come to mind? Uh, I mean, the go-to is always Illy. Always <laughs> Illy. <laughs> That's the go-to answer. Really? All of it. I mean, yes. they're playing in Minnesota. It's got to be Illy. Yeah. Like Seattle, Illy. Well, they got Seattle. They, they've got some good matchups. Yeah, they're going to be put up some points. So I would say anyone on the Empire, honestly. Yeah, because they're. Gonna, I mean, you never know. Um, Rucker could put up a fight, but I Again, think the personal, fantasy does come down to averages. Yes. So like, you could take your roles on one guy who dominates in their one mm-hmm. match that they have or whatever it yeah. is, and like take and take your role there. That could be pretty interesting. I think with uh, like something like that, like if you if you take like uh, Florida, Florida, mm-hmm. Skies playing maybe. Toronto, yeah, like Skies could be insane. Skies, Skies put up mm. huge numbers, and that's like one, I mean, it could be it could be three maps, mm-hmm. and then you're getting those averages for those three maps, yep. and that's an insane weekend. So mm-hmm. that is something to consider when trying out your fantasy draft strategy. Yeah. So no, absolutely, I mean, overall, again. Check the links down in the description. It, um, yes. Thanks to everybody who submitted yes, and tweeted for the Listener League. It was a blast. It was fun. And uh, we'll definitely be doing stuff like that more mm-hmm. in the future. And our announcement for the merch giveaway, which is not yes. related to Draft Buff, but our merch giveaway, we'll be doing that at the end of the podcast mm-hmm. as well. Stay so tuned. So make sure to stay tuned. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, so again, shout out Draft Buff. Check out the link in the description, the pinned comment as well, if you're listening to the podcast in the description. And you can join the community draft royale there and sign up for Draft Buff. So with yes. that said, I think we can get right into our news of the week. So let's go. The Call of Duty News of the Week. Let's go, baby. Okay, so there is a lot to go over today. Obviously, we're gonna be keep keep try to keep this thing short because we got a lot of information to get into today. So um, we'll try to keep the news as compact as possible and as digestible as possible for you guys. So obviously, I think we want to kind of want to start off with something kind of interesting, which was uh, one of the infamous leakers on Twitter on in in the in the YouTube Call of Duty sphere is Tom Henderson, and mm-hmm. he's been pretty accurate with his leaks in the past two years. Mm. And uh, he said, as reported earlier this year, there's essentially a race to see who can develop COD 2021 first, whether it's Infinity Ward or Sledgehammer Games. Activision usually reports this info during their quarter four (laughs) earnings, which last year being an exception, we might we might be waiting a while for an announcement on like what the 2021 COD, who will actually be even created by. Like this is horrible. What? (laughs) This is just a terrible. race. Isn't this that is like, like a... the big no no is rushing things? <laughs> <laughs> Not for Activision. And this was posted on like the COD Reddit, on the mm-hmm. the subreddit, and like I really do agree with a lot of the comments that were down there. Like, I mean, dude, if Sledgehammer can't win this race on a four year development cycle, <laughs> then they gotta be chalked. Like, <laughs> no joke. Like, they had a delay. They were supposed to they delay this year. Yeah. They were supposed to release this year. Like, come on, man. Wow. Well, and mm. uh, yeah, I mean, I saw one guy say, like, I mean, how is this not gonna be Modern Warfare mm-hmm. like 2.0? Two, right. Literally. It's gonna be five new multiplayer maps, mm-hmm. the same exact movement, same engine, same everything, just adding new maps. 
I mean, that's what it's going to be. It, it, it's going to be. It's inevitable, it's, right? It, it, Do you think it's, it'll be... Well, they already talked about Advanced Warfare versus World War Three. It's going to be Modern Warfare 2. Yeah. 2.0. 2.0. I mean, Modern Warfare I don't know how the fluff you even call this. Like, yeah. what do you call this? Modern this is Warfare. so scary. Modern Warfare. It's probably like Modern Warfare with a new name. Like, Modern Warfare Unleashed. Modern Warfare <laughs> Revived. <laughs> Remastered, revived. revived. Modern Warfare, reimagined. Reimagined. Yeah, something like that. But I don't know. Like, bruh, come on, man. This is just like, what is happening with Call of Duty? Is the issue money? is, is that it's getting popular. Warzone, but yeah, Warzone is, is just taking over their thing, which mm-hmm. gets me more and more nervous for like oh, yeah. competitive COD. Um, we'll talk. Obviously, you know, we're gonna be talking a lot about league play here in a second. Um. But yeah, like that was some, some wild stuff and something that we at least wanted to bring up here at the start of the of the news before we get any of the roster stuff. Because like something to keep on your radar, we might not hear much about. I mean, think about how long it was before we heard about this year's COD. <sighs> I it know was, it might be the same thing. Like what? Honestly. After Champs, right? We didn't mm-hmm. know anything about a little. Yeah, after Champs. I feel like it was after Champs. So it's like, mm-hmm. what in the world, man? So we'll see. I don't know. I'm not. My hopes. My hopes are you know definitely a little mm-hmm. lower at this point right now. Um, with that said, again, we'll be talking about league play here in a second. Yeah. Uh, the other news, the, the kind of the big news this week when it comes to roster stuff was Parasite is 99.9% officially confirmed at this point. He tweeted the it's official gif mm-hmm. and Scrap said it on the eavesdrop. He, so, I mean, he, yeah. like, he, he officially <laughs> leaked it. And uh, the other side of things that, that Scraps also said was why is that, that zero, like because Scraps, he, he kind of talked about his whole process. I don't know if you saw mm-hmm. that. Um, yep. That like why he was in Mexico was because it's like a it's like a get around for getting to the United States right now. Mm-hmm. You have to go to Mexico and then travel from Mexico to the United States. Like what? So How does it mm-hmm. make that's so crazy? But mm-hmm. uh, he said that that's something apparently wasn't zero wasn't really willing to do. So yeah, which is which why I think is kind of weird. That I agree. But, like, but you can't. I mean, how long would the quarantine yeah. be? How good would like Scraps was there for nineteen days? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. It's weird to me that Zero wouldn't take that. Just, you're going to be there 19 days. You know, it's not going to be that bad. And then you'll be you're in America. in Cancun, man. Possibly. <laughs> right. Now, yeah, I agree. That is yeah. kind of crazy. The whole, the whole situation is just weird. But yeah. Hey. <laughs> Zero was looking I, good, too. I think Zero. I don't, I don't know. But hey. But hey. I, honest, I honestly feel like Zero is a big loss. I agree. Oh, for sure. Like, I agree. I love that Parasite's in. I wish it like I don't know if Zero was the right player to switch because even when he was on European ping, he was like killing it in that kickoff. Um, I know, man. So if he was on NA, who knows? I, yeah, literally. I've got a feeling Zero is not. He'll be back here soon. I think. I feel like. Yeah. Again, the crazy thing will be is if London starts playing well. Yes. That we should mention last week on the That'd podcast, but that would be crazy. Mm-hmm. Is if they start playing well, then London, then Zero's just sitting there like, bruh. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's crazy. So, uh, we'll talk more about that later when we're talking about predictions yeah. with the London roster as a whole. But competitive settings, something. There's a few competitive things, obviously, mm-hmm. with this update and the drop of league play that are separate from league play. Um, one thing that was mentioned on Twitter was that Crossroads P4 might be moving down to like ice or like yeah. uh, uh, to A S and D. Which is going to be interesting. I mean, that hill is going to be an absolute cluster. You're crazy. With the ARs like oh, sitting yeah. on cliff and then the other mm-hmm. ARs sitting on the box headies yeah. and top bridge and stuff. Like, it'd be crazy. impossible to hold. Yeah, I, I don't but know. I think it's better. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, I feel like it's a better change from, from where it is now because it mm-hmm. feels like it, it's just impossible <laughs> um, to break. But well, the rotation, yeah, the rotation's so simple mm-hmm. for right now to P4, which yeah. is what's crazy. So mm-hmm. maybe it'll make it somehow. I don't know, just like a better fight, possibly, depending on the angles you 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 take and hold. Yeah, it but. makes the other two money hills a lot more interesting because it was mm-hmm. basically like three money hills. Yeah. So is now that there's two more balance, I think it just makes the 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 map more mm-hmm. balanced as a whole, and it'll help the spawns a lot. Yeah. Like where right. where because it all started because Clay posted a gif of him getting literally spawning within yeah. half a second, getting insane. shot from behind. Yeah. That was really and so he was like really competitive map we got here, <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> and uh, then then he got a reply finally. So we'll see. Yeah, that's something to keep your eye on. The other thing was in the in the league play update, or in the in the update when they dropped Express, mm-hmm. um, which sh- Express is great by the way. They changed some of the movement aspects, mm-hmm. which was a little whack. The the jumping's a little bit different now. Mm-hmm. Yep, 
They said they added a small speed penalty and jump height penalty after landing from a jump. So it's it, like... It nerfs jump shots. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which was by far the best movement in the game. Yeah. They did say... Pretty cool. There's a little side note. It says, we will continue to monitor this change in the live environment yeah. and make further tuning changes as needed. So that's cool that they did that, but uh, was anyone complaining about jump shots? No, of course not. No, so, no. definitely not. So, I mean, overall, I, right now, at least with the, with the situation, I think it's worse than it was. Mm-hmm. But it, it's not the worst thing ever. It could be worse than it is right now, but uh, I mean, yeah. I preferred it how it was before. You, you do feel like you get a little stuck in the mud when you jump and you're like, what? And it doesn't feel as good, but it, it's something you can get used to pretty quick, I yep. think, as a whole. Um, then the, the other good thing was the aim assist. We're, we're slowly getting there with the smoke grenades. Um, they said aim assist while inside smoke has been removed. Yeah. Which is which was kind of a weird thing that like, you could get some aim assist while inside the smoke if you're aiming at someone outside the smoke, but not vice versa. Outside, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that was an issue. But now we still got the whole issue where you, the visibility from inside smokes versus outside smokes is an issue. And they mm-hmm. said that they were going to be looking at that and monitoring it and try to make a change. So hopefully we can get smokes and then snipers back in in comp here in the next few weeks. Yeah. yeah. Which would yep. be ideal, and that would be a big shift in meta. Yes, back in S and D, like if, mm-hmm. if teams are practicing S and D for the next three weeks on no S and Ds and snipers, that'll be something to pay attention to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that'll be pretty crazy. Yeah, Ho- hopefully it it gets fixed. I think it's more fun with the oh, with so, the smokes and sniping. You know? so, so much more fun, man. I hope it 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 just adds more dynamic to it and more options, of course. But yeah, they. I really hope it gets fixed. And, We'll see what happens. I, I, I mean, I don't know if this is going to be like a, they're trying to fix it right now or it's, not, or, or if it's just kind of more yeah. <laughs> off to the side. I don't know. Yeah, like a six weeks. Maybe. Exactly. I mean, it brings that like potential. Well, like obviously it's like another stepping stone to getting snipers back. But then I'm also really curious to see once it finally comes all the way through, like there's no one more, like more one way smokes. What teams are going to be heightened because they get their snipers back? Like if the S and D scene yeah. changes a bunch by no, like for sure. how good the teams are at it. I, mm-hmm. I mean, I think it will. Like yeah. I know for me, it's like I play so much better when smokes are on the map. It's just easier for me to like visualize how to play, and I'm sure mm-hmm. that's the case for for certain pro players. Yeah, depending mm-hmm. on the game. I and mean, if you look back at the certain games where smoke where smokes were involved, there were certain guys that definitely were better in S and D in those games than, than past years. So that'll be interesting, mm-hmm. man. I'm really looking forward to that. And hopefully we can back ASAP. The other funny thing was that like there was like the whole is CTF coming? Oh CTF That was, coming. So, that was weird. so weird that like in the it was in the what the It was the like announcement trailer for the oh, CDL for the skins. skins. Mm-hmm. And there was and a flag it was on, a flag on someone's back. back. It was like, oh, so CTF is going back or Yeah. What? I, that was probably just an oversight. Probably. I yeah. mean, you know, what do you expect that is? <laughs> but mm-hmm. yeah, like I, I don't know. Any is there any traction to that at all? Probably not. I just don't like if they brought it back, w- would there be any consideration for that to be added into comp? I doubt it. Not with I, control I just, and everyone scrimming there's on just it no and, way. Like, Unless they're pulling the BO3 method of like having control plus CTF and then you just remove the hard point, the second hard point. That'd be so weird. But that doesn't really make much sense. I mean, no. with raid back, like that'd be fun. Yeah. But mm-hmm. I don't know. I would be surprised. I, but because well, then you could have raid four times in a row. Yeah, no joke. <laughs> if they add it, like I, I prefer just to like. I'm in. Actually, I'm in. Four <laughs> raids in a row. Yeah. This is literally London docks and whatever it was. Forest. forest all over again. Yeah. yeah. Express and raid. Oh my gosh. Nightmares. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. No. I I do hope for, if for somehow this actually is coming back. I don't know. I don't like where where there's a abundance of uh game modes like i'd rather just have it be the three our point yeah that makes sense control well, do you that, think but... ctf would flow like well enough for competitive even just how the maps are i think that... it, i think it'd be okay at best again on the new maps probably not mm-hmm. but right <laughs> on right. the yeah. on the on like raid and express you could probably make you probably make it work on express oh yeah um but yeah that, that's a weird thing so i probably nothing there but you never know so then in other leak news, of course, there was the CDL team camos, pretty straightforward there, the phase and then the actual kits and teams were announcing some of their merch, of yep. course, as well, which is pretty and the dope. merch is looking way better. Like the merch oh, looks so really much better. good this year. Yeah. And some teams, some teams still haven't announced, right? Um, yeah, but I most of so. them have. Yeah. And then, uh, 
They announced the official broadcast team again. Yes. Jess is Jess back. Jess is back. Jess is back, which is dope. That's really cool. And then, of course, Merck and Maven are officially in again mm-hmm. uh, because of the whole holdout situation. <laughs> and they confirmed that the Barracks is coming back with yes. TP. Yeah. So, I nice. mean, that's that's good. That was the best content series they've done by a mile, mm-hmm. Simon Close. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, that was good to see. And everyone else is back. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lando and Lando Study. Lando and Study are back. Yeah. Thoughts? I, I think there's room for improvement there, but there I, think, I think they can be a, a good duo. Yeah, I, think I so. agree. I agree. Yeah. I honestly, I really like Lando, how he interviews pros, honestly. I really oh, like it when he interviews Yeah, we, yeah, we talked about that last year where he was fantastic with the he's, interviews and the pros. He's very good on, on air. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So that'll be fun. I, I do like that a lot. And then, of course, the whole custom classes thing, which at this point right now is a big old flop. It's yeah, a big old what flop. What the world happened there? Where like it sounded like that was a locked in confirmed thing yep. for league play, and then at this point it's a free for all. Nope. But you can um, do whatever you want. Yeah, so we'll talk more about that in a second. But then we lead into our drama section of things. <laughs> it was a wild, <laughs> a wild, wild time week on of drama on in the scene when it comes to sensor versus accuracy. Frosty <laughs> and the rocker Krim this week was just going off and. Mm-hmm. It was a wild time. Thoughts on thoughts on the drama as a whole, Sam. Do you want to kick us off with the drama section? I mean, it was it was crazy. So we did mention, I think, briefly that Neptune was getting accused. Yes, of the ATS. ATS. But then mm. Krim went in, went in super in. hard. In. <laughs> I mean, and then was, Neptune was firing back. Yeah, because like so so basically, Krim was one hundred percent certain. Beyond that, all doubt. Beyond all doubt that Neptune was using ATS. <laughs> maybe maybe just in the opening weekend, because d- during scrims, Neptune, ever, after every single map, he goes to a setting and shows ATS. Yeah, it was, off. it was after opening weekend, and then that mm-hmm. scrim where Krim was yes. in there. Yeah. So, like, that's the thing, which he, he Krim tweeted, peep YouTube. Did he ever post a YouTube video? I actually don't know. I don't think he did. Um, but I thought that, that kind of fizzled out, because I think, honestly, Krim was... By far in the wrong there. That's a personal opinion. Yeah, I mean, I mean, maybe he was. I don't, I don't, but like, I don't know if he's trolling. Really or? matter that much? I mean, like you can ask him. Like what I don't understand is why come at him publicly so hard too. Like I mean, I get he's a troll, but like, like part part of me thinks that Krim is just being Krim, right? I mean, like yeah, he, for the for the lulls, for the lulls being true. But like at the same time. Target Neptune like that, like this is this kid's first time in the yeah, league. Yeah, that's the weird thing. Oh, I know. Krim takes no prisoners. I know. Like, like there's oh, a decent geez. chance he might just DM him afterwards. Like, lol. I, jokes. Yeah, I know. And but like, Neptune's like, then it's like, well, you just ruined his perception publicly. So even like, yeah. unless he apologizes publicly, I don't yeah. know, man. So, I mean, Krim's hilarious, and I I love everything Krim does. So I know that video that of him racing in the go karts at the <laughs> Envy headquarters was pure jokes. I that yeah. was hilarious. Yeah. Also, Envy signing those chess girls is genius by the way like mm. that just makes so much sense yeah um mm-hmm. so it's so weird seeing like chess people in esports mm-hmm. still like what who what is 2020 yeah. in 2021 man so crazy but it's the, it's the way um so yeah that was but like that, that's pretty much it for Krim and neptune yeah i mean they exchanged they exchanged some shots some, like some shots for sure like yo like literally going at like each yeah. other's throats i don't have the quotes yeah. here but they were they were going to town on each other yeah. i mean the crim like just like he'll just call it like he sees it. he's like that's what it is like the thing that's good about crim i think he keeps everybody honest because like even if like he wasn't you're like i i'm really just not going to be doing this stuff because crim will call me out mm-hmm. and everyone will look at it which yeah. maybe that's what he was doing was like he does that just to like it gets other people looking at it, and then that truth will probably come out from it. Or yeah. he just switches off, and no one goes back to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Like he was screenshotting everything, and like, <laughs> like, and he was going after Easy Mac as well, like, <laughs> yeah. because Easy Mac was like they weren't using it, and then yeah. he's like, shut up, like, yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like Easy Mac has been a target a couple of yeah, times. Yeah, he's getting smoked, man. Like, dude, I feel, I feel, I feel bad, bad for, for Easy him, Mac, man. Yeah. All he does is bring he value tries. to the scene. You I know. know. He, he just does. he tries to chime in with like something like. Well, you know, tries to be like intelligent about it and like thinking it through. Chill. And, and yeah, Krim will just go in and be like, "No, you idiot!" <laughs> and just nuclear explode him. I know, you <laughs> like, burger. Like, like literally, I think he's like all this tweet was like saying was just like <laughs> he said he, to he him, "Could be like he could have, but there's no 
Like no proof. He <laughs> said, "You are an absolute fool." Crunch <laughs> yeah, the numbers in that TI eighty five so Simp can raise his KD. <laughs> oh my goodness, dude! Crim is just insane. Bro. I think Crim's just keeping everybody honest, though. Man, he, he, wins, he wins, especially it. right now. We go dude. online, like part of you is going to be like, "I'm going to keep everybody honest, even if they're not." Everyone, he's trying to keep it as honest as possible. I suppose so. Because <laughs> they could, could, they could sneak it through. Maybe you know. Oh, Never yeah, know. that's what he said. He said, he, the guy, the guy replied to him. Said, "Fool's acting like he's the state prosecutor. Like, man, what's wrong with you?" He said he'll record his settings in the future. So hop off his thing unless you yeah. have actual proof. He was like, "Peep YouTube, yeah, <laughs> tomorrow." But I, mm -hmm. to, to my knowledge, there was no YouTube no, video. No, which is a pure shame. But man, that was something else. But. Then, if you want to move on from that, censored accuracy. Yes. They uh, went at it, too. Went That's at what it we're doing here. Yeah. Very hard. Um, I, so, so, so there was a Reddit post here where, of course, Zinni got involved they a little bit. They were zinging them, too. Like, but, man, it was... It was basically, this was all throwbacks to, of course, New York subliner stuff. And Censor yes. was like, dude, like, get over yourself, your ego, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And then Lamar was like, dude, you keep bringing me up. Yeah, like, like stop, right. like, stop talking about me. I don't think about you and, yeah. and like, things like that. I don't I think, understand, man. I think the drama too is like, cause Censor, you know, when they put Mac in, Censor was, he's the sub, like technically you'd think your sub would be like the next guy to replace the person. But I think actually told him like, nobody want, like, you're just not good enough to be in here. And actually took the claim of like, I'm just being honest about yeah. this. I'm being honest with you about this. No one else will be honest with you. I'm just being honest. Like, he, I mean, he kind of threw the rest of the New York cell under the bus, though, basically saying they all didn't like you. I mean, it's yeah, basically he what said he said. The rest mm -hmm. of them, but like, you know, Tatch and Zoom, I don't think they ever claimed things like that. They right. never well, told yeah, Tatch would never that, say something like that. Face, but actually will, and I think that's where it all kind of like stemmed and censored. Doesn't believe accuracy about that and yada, yada, yada. And yeah, they took shots and it was brutal. Yeah, it, it went down, man. It went down, and uh, <laughs> yeah, and then there was the I whole. I feel for censor though. And then Frosty was coming back at the rocker for starting the whole star glitch thing. <laughs> yeah. That all came up from the crim conversation, yeah. where, where like uh, Skies was like, "Oh, we're always cheating, huh?" Florida's you know? always cheating. Florida's always cheating, huh? And, and then, then Clay uh, came back and said, "ATS is blown in proportion, but you guys were certainly doing the star glitch." Yeah, and then Frosty was like, like "F Whoa, off!" Like, no, no, rocker, rocker was. <laughs> Stark and everyone was like, "Oh yeah!" And then Sylvia was like, "Whoa!" Yeah, <laughs> it was like so much. Yeah, and back and forth. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. Just, it was just quite the week. I mean, you can spend was, the whole podcast just talking about each tweet, I like know, and going through the honestly, drama. Yeah, there's just so much. I was literally like, dude, I would pay someone to like make a log of all the history of drama between mm -hmm. players and what's real and what's not, oh, and like. Oh, yeah linking podcasts like mm -hmm. with each other and tweets to get with like that'd be so funny like the web of drama in the comedy the community history. would be so mm -hmm. funny oh, so i would great. love a pro to, like drop all of that would be so funny um, maybe when one retires after like a long time like you know five ten years down the line we're gonna see somebody come out like here's what was really going the on drama the documentary scenes. yeah it'd be oh, awesome my goodness, man. dude that would be a, it'd a be lead. so funny i, I want to see all of the jcap v clayster versus <laughs> e united man, stuff i like i forgot like how that like was so bad, bad. That was. Yeah. It was a long time. I mean, that team basically almost completely broke apart, yeah. and then they end up winning and champs. And they win champs. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like what? Yeah, it's insane. But um, <laughs> let's talk about league play a little bit here, just before we get into our predictions yeah. and the eye shift interview. So, I mean, obviously, it was a disaster. It it, oh, it launched. We all assumed that there was going to be preset classes. We don't even know at this point if it was intended that there was supposed to be. Yeah. They have yet to put out a statement about it. Um. In that same vein, though, we'll talk more about the league play stuff, but I tweeted at Vonderhaar, and in between our, we, we pre-recorded the interview with Shift like 20 minutes ago, and and us recording this, Vonderhaar replied to my tweet. It was crazy. Which was crazy, dude. And uh, he, he gave a little bit of insight, like, yeah, we want to we wanna be more transparent about this stuff. And like he, he added the community manager for Activision, was like, yeah, maybe this is something we can talk more about. And then he was like... I do think it would be good to be a little bit more transparent about like the math that creates your rankings mm -hmm. and things along those lines. Um, and he said, thanks for reaching out. So that's yeah. very nice. And so that what was really cool. What were, the, what were the key points he, he touched on? I think it was the first tweet he sent. He said like four things that yeah, were so like Yeah, so he said like reasons. this might be a good top, a blog topic or Reddit article. 
and like not, I don't have enough characters just to do it justice with keywords the scope the accessibility the deadlines and franchise so, so scope accessibility deadlines franchise the there deadline's is. the one that sticks out to me yeah we ran out mm-hmm. of time yeah. <laughs> I mean mm-hmm. and then later on he did say he brought up COVID which I mean is very reasonable I, I understand like at the end of the day they're humans it's hard and yeah. uh, you know he was like I, I, the tw- there was quite a few different tweets he replied to. He didn't reply in like one straight line, so mm-hmm. it's sometimes a little bit hard to find all of them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he replied like, yeah, like, you know, we lost our studio. We, we aren't able to go to the studio to like mm-hmm. communicate these things as a, from a broadcast perspective mm-hmm. and talk about some of these issues in a, in a more transparent way. So it's been a little bit tougher this season or this year. And so um, overall, it looked like hopefully it created a few conversations, at least inside of activision or treyarch in some way so worst case scenario at least they're talking about it a little bit more mm-hmm. but yeah really well, he cool. even said he's going to talk about it more too right yeah and like it sounds like he knows that they're it's not what they wanted exactly even though yes. you know they didn't even want it to be like this um but it's like kind of the only option they probably had yeah in that same tweet he said we got some work to do in my opinion to evangelize how it works and mm-hmm. after we clean up some of the obvious bugs. So he did ad- admit there were some obvious bugs. Mm-hmm. So hopefully that's referring to the issues with the classes cause, yeah. and the rule sets. Because right now you can use literally anything in League Play, which is mm-hmm. insane. So yeah. mm-hmm. I don't know. Thoughts on the whole situation? Yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm glad for the start of, the, of, of communication. Like that's just big, like huge. Like if, if something isn't happening... I think even you know scraps and Hux, scraps and hex talked about it. It's like just talk to us. Like like why is this not happening? Like most people are reasonable. I I, I don't want to say all people <laughs> yeah. are reasonable. There's, there's people that are will hate you no matter what you say. But like right. just not saying anything and then releasing this when it was delayed with it, no communication is, up until is just very maddening. Like like it really yeah. is frustrating. Like 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 we. Like feel like we're just side. Like here you go. Here's a you Here's know the scraps. Co- copy and paste of Black Ops Four League Play. Oh, and we forgot and to. It, and it barely the, works. Yeah, so it's like, yeah. like come on. Yeah. So, mm. but yeah, I, but yeah, I, I just hope that there's more communication. You know, explanation as to why things are happening the way they are. I would love to know why. Like, the, like the math behind everything. The decision process. That would like, be very nice to know, like what goes into exactly. Like, your, is it just our wins and losses? But yeah. like, people have won all their maps and got placed it, in competitor. competitor. Like, what? Shout out Awakening, ten mm. KD, <laughs> and got placed in competitor. <laughs> like, so funny. how does that happen? <laughs> that is hilarious. So, yeah, I just hope there's just more discussion around it. Yeah. And, so. Rex, right? But at least we got a league play, right? Like, I see the bright <laughs> side of it is like at yeah. least we have a league play. Woo! At least like. We can do 4v4 COD now. Uh, I mean, like, yeah. and just jump into a game. The CDL tab was cool. The The schedule, the standings, yes. and things like that. That was a huge That's step. That's cool. Super huge cool. Step. It's clean, and I, I, I really like that part, And there's too. a link to uh, the website mm-hmm. and stuff like that, so, like, yeah. people who are on PC can open it up right away. Yeah. And, yeah I, excuse me, and, and I, go from there. I love how it shows the standings, too. That's like, awesome. Like, 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 just clear, like, this is where it's at. Like, that's so cool. Dude, one guy on Twitter... I, gave me an idea or put out the idea that in league play the the teams when you when you load into a match should randomize what cdl teams are playing Mm -hmm. or it could be based off the matchups of that coming weekend Hmm. it's like in theory when you load into a game one team is the rocker and one team is is the ultra yeah that'd be awesome pretty cool i was like that is a dope idea that's actually pretty awesome Mm -hmm. yeah i I like that yeah so i was like yo wait a second that might actually be it though yeah so mm-hmm. that was dope. I, I shout out that guy. I don't yeah. know, unfortunately don't have your uh, your at right here, but yeah. that was cool. Um, any other thoughts there? I mean, we probably need to keep, keep moving on here, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah. pretty wild, pretty crazy. overall. Any any other final thoughts? No. We want Elo system, not this, but this. If this is the best we're gonna get, yeah, it's better than nothing. Yeah, go check out the tweets that Vonderhar ended up replying yeah. because I think those are pretty cool, and they acknowledge like my. I literally asked like, hey, like, why do we have this instead of like a World War II or like an Overwatch mm-hmm. type type uh, system? Yeah, and mm-hmm. he, I mean, he replied, so it's yeah. pretty cool. All right, so with that said, this is pretty exciting. We are going to talk some challengers mm-hmm. with I hold shift oh, before we get into the. the insane predictions for cdl atlanta mm-hmm. and the the kickoff event here for the, yes. the, the league so 
Let's get into our conversation with Eyehold Shift. It's a go one, man. He's a goat, and it's a blast. Let's roll it. Let's go. I'm sitting in my office. I doubt that. And why would you doubt that? If you were in your office right now, we'd be having this conversation face to face. And here we are. We got I Hold Shift in the house to talk all things <laughs> challengers today. Obviously, the GOAT. And not to mention, now an official CDL talent for challengers. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. baby. Mm-hmm. That news dropped Ooh. today as we're recording. <laughs> and, of course, we're talking the qualifiers this weekend. And uh, the Elite Series is mm-hmm. kicking off at, tonight as you were watching here on Tuesday. Yes. And my word, shift. thanks for coming on, my man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, always a pleasure being on, man. I I didn't realize. I think it was the second time that I was on for you guys. You're like, we're the only. You're the only guest the who's been on the show. Three like, time, <laughs> three no Pete. Idea, Let's dude. go, three Pete. I'm starting to look like John Mulaney hosting <laughs> Saturday Night Live. Dude, he's only been on it about twelve times dude, so far. So hey, <laughs> that is exactly right. You are the only guest, the three time yes. guest on the podcast. Now, absolute honor. We're very picky. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, you've got to have some pretty specific set of skills to, to show up here on the podcast um but man i mean overall i guess we just want to dive right into the weekend of the qualifiers and overall thoughts on challengers and uh basically just leading that conversation into what that means for the elite series so i guess you can again as you're the man around here you can lead the conversation here when it comes to the the qualifiers <laughs> and all things of course sam rex interject whenever you'd like of course do the work for us um, but what were your first Why impressions am I, the man? I don't like I this. Mean, dude, what were your <laughs> first impressions of the qualifiers and what were your thoughts obviously you hosted an insane stream uh, i it's a lot of unexpected things happened. Yeah. I think it was a yeah. lot of what people were coming away with because mm-hmm. when we were getting into like the winners quals for both Europe and North America, we were largely looking at, okay, the top eight teams by seeding are playing up against each other for a position in the winners quals. And we were like, yeah. all right, so we're kind of getting what we would come to expect as far as overall possible results. Uh, but then there were just a lot of just weird things that started to happen. <laughs> right? And first and foremost was, was it Europe? Europe, that Team Vertex squad, who was like the 30th yeah. seed off pro points, mm-hmm. was like a couple of maps away from being in the Challengers Elite. I was Insane. like, what in the heck is happening over there? <laughs> <laughs> Literally. I mean, it was, it was pretty wild, like all over the place when it came to like, at first it felt like it was, okay, it was kind of going to plan. And then we started seeing some of the action get closer as like as things got a little bit more intense. I mean, it, it was weird having a tournament where like, you know, you end with the top eight you know mm-hmm. like it was it yeah. definitely felt a little weird going into it you're like oh my word we're, we're already here like this is this is the qualify you know like it, it came up so yeah. quick on some of those matches um first i guess first thoughts overall on the some well, let's start on the na side of things i guess because uh sure. that, that is the lead story around here um thoughts on na on <laughs> na let's start on some of the teams that ended up not qualifying Ugh. first which is Ooh. which is unfortunate obviously there were a few big time teams thoughts on some of those guys it's a feels bad for triumph, right? Like, yeah, man. Without question, it's a feels bad for triumph. And I think it was just one of those things that, I mean, it, it's it's a one-day tournament. And how many right. times have we talked about other open events during the CWL or during the home series and cups last year where it's like, you show up on one day, all of a sudden you're winning. I mean, like, <laughs> Carnage last year, not to take anything away from them during their finals performance at MW uh, Challengers Champs, but that was the number nine seed coming in, right. and they finished second so mm. like you come out with one hot day you're good to go yeah the the opposite could also be true though for you <laughs> i mean triumph they got kind of smacked around by wester in the winner's quals not to say i'm super surprised by that because again wester we know how good they are but for them to not yeah. really put up too much of a fight versus zed's team that was a was a pretty big surprise to me mm. them getting i think 3-0 swept during that was a big like what that right what, like <laughs> mm. huh and then slammed as well the other team that i think everyone expected to be able to make it yeah and they go up against a mr midmaps team that again was a solid squad that i was surprised that they got put down to the lower bracket as early as they did um but yeah it, it both teams this you know just kind of tuck into a, a tough position mr midmaps they lost to team zed triumph lost to team zed you know, they come back, they're able to find a good win versus uh, um, 
what am I trying to say? Versus Slam there at the end. Yeah. So it's just kind of a tough situation. But um, yeah, the big surprise, I'd say, it'd have to be Zed Squad without question. Well, yeah, it's crazy because they were like around top 32, pretty much all of cha- like all of challengers yep. averaging. And all of a sudden they put in this guy, Tay, and now like they just had a crazy good day. And it, it's amazing that they got there. I love that Zed, Dens, Jerd, like all those guys got there. Tay's getting his chance now. Yeah. Uh, I'm really proud of them. I think it's great, but yeah, it's for sure. crazy the climb they had. Yeah, after the roster changes they made originally with Sensor too, right? So it's like, uh, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, that's an, a tough situation for him, but like the, the roster changes leading to them adding Tay, like pretty cool. Yeah. No, Tay, I, you know, we were talking about it just before we, we hit the recording button. You know, I had a chance to watch him play with people like Littlefoot, Nestrial, and Flames, with like in in, uh, in uh, Black Ops Four. Yeah, and uh, you know, it, his skill is there. Um, it, it's just surprising. Like we talked about it on broadcast. It was like, look, like y- if you look at the roster, it's like, okay, you've got Zed, Jerd, Dance, three players, former pros. <laughs> Makes sense yeah. that they make the elite. Like if you were not paying attention to challengers at all, like if you didn't know about their struggles going mm-hmm. through the opening cup so far, you would just see that last roster and be like, oh, okay, cool. Like they made it. Like right. that's a team that you would expect to be there. But then you see Tay, like amongst all of the <laughs> le- rest of the list of the people that have qualified. It's like, who? So, yeah, yeah really, yeah. really good on him for sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. that, that was wild. I mean, you know, it came down to to like I, what I loved. I loved like the whole situation when you got to those qualifier matches, when you go from top 16 to top eight. And like those matches were an absolute blast. I mean, what were you what, so with when it comes to like West Star? What were your expectations going into the qualifiers? Did you assume this was going to be cake, uh, like a cakewalk form, or where where were you at with Wester after their uh, you know disappointing performance in in the previous cup? Yeah, I had them qualifying. I think yeah. everyone would have had them qualifying. I mean, double elimination, you got to remember that, yeah, they finished top 16 in the cup number five. That was before <laughs> double elimination was a thing. So like, yeah. even if they were to be surprised by almost team D-Gen, there would have been an yeah, opportunity for them to make their way through the lower bracket. And I had them qualifying in one form or the other, without question. I think the teams that finished with the winner's quals, I absolutely had qualifying. Built by Gamers played the best Call of mm-hmm. Duty that they've played so far this year, by the way. They looked incredible. Yeah, uh, but then UT Crew and Subwaters Academy, I think just about everybody who was out there watching had them qualifying in, in one space or another, whether that's from the winner's side of the bracket or if they had to do it in a second life in the lower bracket. It's just hard to beat those teams twice in the same day, I think, mm-hmm. overall. Right, mm-hmm. that's the thing. I don't have all of the seeds in front of me, but how how many of them were the top eight seeds? It was like at least six or seven of them, right? Out of those four, those were the top four seeds. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, like order. overall who qualified? Was it um, six of the top eight, I maybe? Or I, I can't remember. remember. Off the top I can of my head. find out real quick. I yeah. still have the game, the Gamepedia bracket somewhere. Okay, there you go. Um, but yeah, overall, it was go. like it. Go, heading into it, you're like, okay, we're looking at the, like the top, you know, six, eight. And you're like, I feel pretty good about, especially those top four teams. I think all of us felt pretty good about them heading into the qualifiers. <laughs> and then it's yeah, that was what was pretty crazy. I think overall was was seeing how that played out for those last two teams. So I didn't recognize this, but out of the winners qualifiers, that's your top four. One, two, three, four. Yeah. In the lower bracket, that's five, six, and seven. Oh. And then Team Z is 26. Wow. <laughs> and they wow. beat the number eight seed. So. Wow. wow. That's wild. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's like people, people, they spend so much time theorizing about how they're going to finesse to get the best, you know, to, to finesse the bracket and work with their pro points. But at the end of the day, the top eight seeds are basically right there about to qualify. So it's like, yep. you know, it, it's just irony. You know, it's the people, those middling teams spend so much time like trying to finesse the bracket. And then you're like, well, at the end of the day, the top teams, the top teams are the top teams, you know? So it's like right. pretty, pretty and wild. To be fair, wild. like Team Z, like they kind of needed Tay's points. Like, Tay oh, came in with 18. Yeah, I think they did. Like, Tay had 1,800 points. Hmm. And wow. at least just on tournament, just on tournament places. I don't know about his, like, weeklies right. that he's been able to do. That's almost as much as all of the other three combined. Wow. I'm looking at my spreadsheet. Jerd, Denz, and Zed, between the three of them, their best average event, like, through the first five cups, yeah. their best average placing is 44. They average 44th on their five cups average. That's where they crazy. Play. I didn't realize that actually. Oh, yeah. That that's three top sixty fours, and the rest are top thirty twos. They didn't wow. place above top thirty two at all in any of the first five cups. That's yeah. It's crazy. I mean, what does that say about Tay then? I mean that that I is. Guess a, he's, I guess it's the truth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> the world. That's about that chemistry is working out for him. You know, uh, it's, it, 
that actually just blew my mind. I actually didn't realize that at all. I mean, that makes me really excited to see what that squad can do with him inside of uh inside of the Elite Series then because I mean, a, a whole onslaught of tests now. I mean, overall like other things in the NA, like what what were you interested by? What team even though the, the the right teams qualified, was there a certain team that definitely like jumped out off the page, either in a good way or a bad way, um, underperformed or overperformed? Skrull Squad, Kaiser or Mohawks team. Uh, okay. They looked great. I mean, uh, Visions was on that cast with me when we were watching over them, and he yeah. knows Mohawk pretty uh, and Kaiser. I think they're both uh, uh, pretty regular occurrences in the Toronto scene overall. Okay. Um, but like, that's a team that again, I was. They've stuck together since the very, very beginning. They have mm. not made any changes hardly at all over the last couple of weeks, really oh, wow. since after the second cup through the holiday season. So again, it kind of just goes to show, like you're talking about, if you try to finesse the math with a new team. You're going to get beat. And yeah. This is a Skrull squad team that stayed together and beat some really good teams on their way to being one win away Man. from getting into the elite qualifiers. But they took down LAG Academy. I'm not going to say that they're and say that I was surprised that they played as poorly as they did. That's just not a team that's been playing all that well. It's just, yeah. It really, it's a real feels bad for the organization. Like you come out before the game is even out and you announce that roster of four. Yeah. And then now what? Like, do you stay with them and like, carry right. them through these home series like yeah. is it even worth it at that point i, I don't really know yeah, what, what do you think is, i mean but. we we had talked about that like what mm-hmm. if this situation does happen and like was this a reason why certain teams decided not to pick up an la or an academy team before mm-hmm. there was that the elite series like do we see anything happen now with teams and academy teams um i i hope that we do see some of the cdl teams look at the teams that are not currently represented by an organization try to find a way to make things happen with them yeah yeah um you know mr midmaps you're looking at your you're a team that has the dallas empire sub as well as the los angeles thieves sub so mm-hmm. i don't really know how that works as far as like can they be branded because yeah you know, can like fellow actually be a part of lat academy like oh, it's yeah. kind of hard to kind of ex- huh. assume like how that would all work out but mm. yeah i think largely you're seeing cdl teams were looking at their teams and saying they're in waiting a while like slammed was supposed to be toronto academy pending they got in yeah pending they got in like <laughs> yeah. they didn't get in so you know now now toronto's in a position where yeah, okay sucks. we just have a substitute that's not an elite i guess that's what we're dealing with we don't, wow. we don't have the uh, the distinguishment of having a team that has been branded by you and now they're not in the elite season so what do you do you know that's right. kind of a weird situation that is a weird situation yeah i mean it'll be interesting to see if any other teams decide to swoop in and like try to snag up one of these teams I mean, it like at this point it seems like wester's down to just make their own brand and do their th- their own thing i mean hey why, Why at not? this point, right? Like, yeah, right. it's pretty crazy. That, I mean, it's pretty big balls move to like turn down money if they get offered like some sort of salary for being an academy team of some sort. But like, I don't know. I mean, I'll be really interested to see how that plays out. You know, mm-hmm. I think they're doing this the smart way. Like, you know, rumor mill was that Paul had gotten offered parasite spot for like the London Royal Ravens right. Academy, the team, yeah. you know, because I think you guys actually talked about that on your on your last podcast. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, but um. I think he's smart by turning that down because now you're in a position to where you're off of a contract. There's going to be expansions next year. And if they continue to be as dominant as they are, you could essentially do what the Vancouver Titans did from season one to season two of the Overwatch League, where they mm-hmm. just pick up the best, what was contenders in Overwatch. They just pick up the best contenders team in the world and you secure the bag, right? Yeah, like you don't, sure. have, yeah. you don't sign on to an Academy roster because that's going to be a couple thousand maybe for the year. And then the Academy organization is going to be selling off your contract for big money. Like you're the one who is able to stipulate what your contract is worth. So I think it's actually really smart that they just build their own brand. They sit behind it. There's Bet maybe on somebody managing them, but you're not locked into a different organization kind of holding you down and kind of being your force of negotiation because that could be, uh, yeah, that could be really, really dicey when it comes to expansion time next year. Yeah, right. that, that's what comes to mind. I mean, like last year, a lot of those guys bet on themselves, assuming that there was going to be expansion this year. So that really sucked for those guys, like you yeah, know, guys sure. like Exotic and basically that whole Triumph roster, and like those guys who would have had substitute opportunities if they wouldn't have turned them down. Um, so that really does suck that like that had to happen like that. But um, I mean, this year it's looking like next year is going to for sure have expansions. So I, I can totally see it, but like. I don't know, man. That that's tough to turn down the upfront money to it's like tough. to bet on yourself, and I mean, it, there is the pressure there for them to to really make it happen these next few mm-hmm. months. I and mean, we saw last year that teams like 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 
Singularity last year who dominated the beginning of the year never really found that groove again in the second half to really like climb the mountain again. And, yep. you know, you never know. So like, that's why I get worried. I mean, like I had a little bit of worry heading into this thing with Wester, like after seeing their S and D at, uh, at, in the last cup, well, coming, cup five. Yeah. yeah. Coming off of the, uh, the new meta with, with the smoke and sniper GAs, but mm. it was cool to see how they adjusted and made it happen mm. inside of the qualifiers. And so, I mean, now looking, now looking forward, you're like, okay, I mean, they're in a pretty good spot to still be the best team or probably the favorite heading into the elite series. So, mm-hmm. um, in, inside of the European scene a little bit, was there anything else that stuck out to you before we talk like elite series specifically with, with qualifiers or anything along those lines? I definitely didn't you know, pay as funny. close attention to the European as I should have. Yeah. And largely it's kind of difficult to, I think, because, you know, I think you have 12 good teams that are out there that could possibly contend right. to be a part of the top eight. Like I was going through my spreadsheet today and filling out the top 32. And like, there were still people that were in the qualifier that I wasn't even tracking because they wow. just had not been playing all that well or yeah. haven't been playing well enough. Like, you know, no top 16 finishes for some of the guys that are in there. And if you're not placing top 16, I just, I'm not adding you to the sheet. It's just, <laughs> there's too many, there's too much yeah. variation in all the regions to do that. Oh, so for sure. I was going through it today. I was like, wow, you know, <laughs> competition really was kind of open here in Europe a little bit, you know, overall. Um, Mm -hmm. But I think the top eight that we got were largely what you would have expected. Just looking at the rosters, like even as I'm actually looking at COD game PD right now, just to see, make sure like I'm not missing anybody. And there really isn't anybody on the list below the top eight that I'm like, Oh, these guys didn't qualify. That's weird. Like Mm -hmm. everyone that you would have expected to qualify did with the only exception being Brezzy's team fell in Moose and PD on that mm. squad with him. That's the, like the ninth team that I would have said should have had an opportunity to qualify. And yeah. they were right there. They were in their last game. They played up against, I think gangsters and uh, lost it in a pretty tight one. I'm pretty sure. So um, yeah, they did. Yeah, it came down to the wire for them. So yeah, that's wild. I mean, like looking at it, you're like, man, I, I, yeah, it's tough to decide. Like, and the other thing that came to mind for me was, uh, Inside, like, if you're, like, Renegades, like, man, the EU's so open. Like, if they would have had a chance to come yeah. to, to Europe and play inside that EU Cup, like, to qualify for, for the Elite Series, there's so much opportunity for a team like that or, you know, Chiefs Esports as well. Like, those top two teams there, like, I mean, that there's so much opportunity there. I was actually really surprised they decided not to make it happen to try to go qualify for the Elite Series in Europe. I'm hoping that they still are working on that idea. Right, I would hope so. I, there, mm. There's been some whispers that there's moves that are trying to be made to try to get the Renegades team over to Detroit, which is where oh, the Renegades that headquarters would be wild. is. Yeah, and honestly speaking, I think that Renegades team does qualify through New, through North America. Yeah, um, really? I think they're playing. Wow. Yeah, I think they're playing good enough Call of Duty to where even if they were to just showed up on the day, like if it was like let's say it was a global land to qualify, I still think they finish probably top eight. They're playing really mm, good. That's right awesome. Now, so. Wow. Dang. Dang. Yeah. Yeah. That's wild. That's cool to hear. Yeah. So I mean, I guess transitioning to the Elite Series, we'll talk. We can start with NA then. Um, thoughts overall with the, the the format. We haven't really talked to you about like the the format specifically sure. when it comes to the the relegations and how the whole bracket system works thoughts on the format as a whole because we talked about a little bit before but i want to hear what you have to say yeah the the bracket's interesting because you need to finish top six right that's you got round robin you have to finish top six um Mm. you get to the top six you have a chance to see playoffs top two teams do make it to the immediate playoff bracket um where again the playoff bracket is technically only four teams but again Put the knockout bracket as also playoffs. It's kind of like <laughs> yeah. it's a so double weird. Why do you bracket. word it like, like that? I don't know. It's really strange. And even if you like look at it like on the website with like the bracket again, like why not just make this a double elimination bracket and just have the top two seeds have buys through the first two rounds? Because yeah. it's almost the exact same thing as what the CDL playoffs were this last year, where yeah. your top two seeds they don't play till round three. Yeah, kind of the same thing here. The only difference is you've got the bottom four, or I guess four, three through six. Your middle four teams they play in a GSL group essentially, and then they qualify for playoffs. So it, it's you win two and you're in, you lose two and you're out for those guys, and then you're in with the top two teams that are there. So it's a little hard to explain, and I'm already <laughs> listening to myself and kind of like forehead cringing because it just doesn't make any sense. Um, I know, but there's literally I no easy probably, way to explain it. 
<laughs> not really no but when you're in a round robin like you should reward those top two teams because Agreed. they probably beat everybody except each other like the second place team probably lost to the first place team that's mm. likely how things will go this year mm. um but yeah i think it's it's really cool because it gives the opportunity for uh your top four teams to still carry on to the next elite season which is good because to be fair the elite seasons are really short yeah um, they are and then it also beyond that one of the positives of it being a short elite season is teams like triumph like slammed you know they have the opportunity to sit there and say look let's just stick together for this next month let's just get better we can make it into that last that next qualifier where we're only having to play up against those bottom four teams. Like we're in a pretty solid spot to then qualify again without having to necessarily be waiting for two, three months before we have that chance to do it again. So yeah, it's going to be a lot of turnover, I think for the bottom four teams, but okay. I think that's a good thing more than a bad thing. Right. Cause in the future it's, it's a 16 team qualified tournament. If I if yeah, I if only I'm right? four get in. Yeah, only okay. four get in. Yeah. To join the previous top four from the previous season, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So that yeah, that's really interesting. So I guess we can have two different predictions. Is that are is there who are the top two teams in your mind that you feel very confident in the NA side are going to finish inside that top four and continue on to the next to the next stage? Is there two that I have a hundred percent stick out? I have out? a hard time being confident with it because I think <laughs> that there are there are four really good teams. Um, I think my top two favorites, this is going to come as no surprise, are Wester and Subliners Academy. Yeah, um, that makes but sense. But like, if Built by Gamers play like they did throughout this split season, like they did during the qualifier, they can beat both of those teams. Like they yeah. played lights they were awesome out they played mm. so damn well everything was so polished and we were watching them play uh when they were kind of in the early stages we watched them play up against skrell squad i think for a little bit and then we definitely watched them play up against higher and they blew higher out of the water man i mean they were playing yeah. so damn good i mean there was it's crazy because like they started off pretty slow this year in inside Very the amateur slow. side of things and people were worried like is this roster even going to stay together what's this going to look like and uh, it's cool to see that they really figured it out and like yeah. really were playing uh, probably their best cut of the whole year at the qualifying term. If that was a cup, they 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 easily could have take took in the cup took taken the cup. <laughs> English is hard. <laughs> um, no, I agree though. They look fantastic. I was really excited to see how they played. Um, okay, so yeah, and then and then Wester realistically, I mean that only makes sense as well uh, on that side for the top two teams. I, I was also going to ask you about. Uh, when it comes to New York Subliners Academy, how impressed were you with Glow Frosty these past two weeks filling in for that squad immediately after Diamond Con leaves and they haven't lost, if anything, they look almost better like in a lot of ways. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, what in the world? I'd argue they looked a little better. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's just such a special player. I mean, we saw it a lot last year. Uh, I think forever in my mind, like where Glow Frosty will always kind of live was, I remember specifically watching him play on Ramaza, main AR. We were at the time talking about how the map is just dominated by SMGs. You know, ARs just get yeah. up on the high ground, just hold an angle, just sit there forehead. Glow Frosty <laughs> didn't do that. He, he <laughs> cleared angles and then took over the map. And it's just, he won so many rotations on his own on a map that we just had not, at that point had never seen an AR take over. Mm. Um, and then beyond that, he was also, I know proper, if he listens to this podcast, he'll love that I bring this up. <laughs> Him and Sib were playing together. Okay. Um, and it was an Arclaw peak search and destroy, and they double sniped where Sib would snipe behind him, and Glow Frosty would put an ACOG scope on the AX50 and watch one of the angles right over <laughs> the top of that A house. It was so cool, and it worked so well. It wow. was just, he's such a heads up player, man. He's yeah. just. He's everything that you want to fill in a position like Diamond Con. And the fact that he came up so clutch in the last couple of weeks in multiple moments just goes to show that, yeah, he's he definitely deserves to be there and is one of the reasons why that team is as good as they are. Yeah, wow. that is insane. That's cool. Yeah. What are your guys' thoughts? So I mean, many. I have a question <laughs> about the... So how much... Like, is this going to be very consistent, this Elite Series? Do you think the bottom four will be totally pretty much replaced every time? Or do you think they'll be able to climb back in? Like, how consistent do you think it's going to be? Yeah, that, that is interesting. I think we saw instances, you know, looking at the where the final placements were. for. I mean, Europe, I think you're largely going to see the same team. Yeah, there might be that one or two sense. that flex in and out, depending if someone comes out hot or if someone comes out cold. Um, but Cade's team 
looked pretty darn good. Yeah. Casey Pioneers, they looked mm-hmm. good. They have yeah. not played largely all that well throughout the entirety of the Cup Series. They're contenders in my mind. Shout out Slammed, to Casey Pioneers. Of course, we Pioneers. talked about Triumph. We talked about. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, especially for you guys. Yeah, man. <laughs> uh, Kaiser's team played well. I mean, Team Degen was a rotation away from taking down yeah, Western. Yeah, that was crazy, being in a man. Qual oh, match. my word. Um, so... Mm. I think that there's going to be some turnover and I don't think you can sleep on players. I mean, as much as I meme on them, like LAG Academy, like <laughs> mental Chino Nero exceed, like they can do great things. Yeah. I just don't think they had a great day. Um, so I, I think that there's going to be a lot of potential for turnover in North America specifically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Th- that's why I love the, the relegation system. Cause it should create some fun storylines throughout the year while also giving the teams a chance to, to like prove themselves throughout this, throughout the whole season. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I thought that with all things considered with all the options, they probably weighed for how they wanted to do the challengers sure. elite that ended up really turning out pretty cool. And I'm really excited to see how the broadcast looks too. Um, yeah. I mean, European side, do, are the, the top two teams, who who are you feeling good about in the Europe side? Because it's pretty crazy. It's, uh, Europe's a little bit more. I'm actually more interested to see what you guys have to say about Europe because I might have to take some of that from my own back pocket. Oh. Europe's Europe's a little wild with the recent adjustments that they just made with like Dave now playing on Connect Four yeah. and getting off of Oracleus and like Harry getting substituted in and you know obtained picking up Chain. Like there are a lot of switches that happened. I, I don't know how much time you guys had to watch, but. I think that Europe's a little bit up for up for grabs right See, now. If I'm being when, candid, well, I agree. When I was watching, I'm like, man, it felt like there were there was like no sh- straight out great team. I mean, you you know, the past year and a half, we've been so used to Europe being dominated by one or two squads that like you, we all thought that kind of be how it would end up being again this year. But like mm. so far, I mean, there's been teams that have looked good, but by no means anyone that stood out to me. And I agree heading into the into the Elite Series that there isn't one that like specifically like jumps off the page. That I that I feel com- I feel like the most confident in finishing top four. I, I would definitely say Singularity. Like when it comes to a team that I for sure will believe like will for sure finish top four. I would definitely bet on Singularity. But outside of that, like um, I mean that Hixie Callum Chain squad. They had BB Connor. Yeah. Like that's a really interesting team. And like. I could see them making a run, but really any of them, man, they're really fun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are we crediting uh, Nubsy for the Hixie squad? I mean, Nubsy kind of, <laughs> Nubsy kind of <laughs> well, made the happen, series. He the scouting to light. series, he, he brought to light Hixie, man. Yeah. That's pretty wild. I mean, to be fair, <laughs> like the oh, scouting series, like the coaches were were borderline if not over the line of disrespectful to a lot <laughs> yeah, of yeah. like the next up and coming European players <laughs> right like, yeah Pixie Wardy uh, uh Harry like all of those guys I mean well Harry obviously played for Team War so it's not nearly as a surprise yeah but, like Hixie is a solid player, man. Like, he's got some <laughs> oh, reputation sure. behind him, like, without question. Like, that team he played with, like, had Callum and Disarray and BB Connor. That was for Modern Warfare Challengers Finals. <laughs> yeah. Like, that was a good team, man. Oh, like, for sure. Those are some good players. So, mm, yeah. I don't know. When they were going through those picks, like, who the hell is Hixie? I was like, how have you not heard about Hixie yet? Like, <laughs> the, guy's, the guy's nasty. Like, he was nasty no, all during coaches, Modern Warfare. The coaches in the, right. for the scouting series for EU were just comedy. They had <laughs> mispronouncing yeah. at, like, at least 80% of the names, too, which was re- just yeah. hilarious. It was funny. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, I mean, anything else you guys have in mind? I mean, when it comes to the broadcast, obviously I'm hyped to see what how the style just plays out in the long term. I mean, they announced the, uh, the Challengers YouTube channel. So if you guys are watching, definitely go subscribe to the Challengers YouTube yes. channel so you don't miss the action. Because they, apparently, as far as we know, right, they're not going to be broadcasting this on the main CDL channel at all. Or at least a little bit, maybe. Or what's the situation there? That's the way that I'm getting it right now. Um, I, I that's outside of my realm. I just you yeah, know gonna, your pay grade. You know, I show up and cast, and you know <laughs> that's that's all I'm really focused on. Not right. really exactly the medium of where, but yeah, I think the idea is that they do want to build out that challengers YouTube as being the main point of where they're going to be able to broadcast that stuff. Um, so yeah, definitely subscribe to that channel because. Again, a lot of talented people will be covering it. There's right. a lot oh, of yeah. talent to be watching over, man. I mean, oh, there's going to be so many good games now. Up. We got the top eight. Oh. Yeah, for oh, sure. So I mean, cool. these are your next up and comers. Like, these are your subs that have been coming in for like your pro oh, players yeah. now when they retire. Like, these are your next in line. Like, you want to see them when they're like now young, they haven't quite made it. Like, this is the chance. 
Right. I mean, like that's, in the, Ross that's the thing is like, <laughs> it's because we never ever had like the, a consistent amateur broadcast. So it's like, you never got to see the, the previous, like the now stars of COD play in those types of events. But like mm-hmm. in like three years, you're going to look back on this, like, yo, this is cool. We got to see this now superstar playing back when he was an amateur, like on, on black ops, cold war. And like, mm-hmm. we just didn't get the chance to do that, you know? unless you were there at the events watching the open brackets in person. Mm-hmm. So it's right. like you could uh, being seeing the next simp on this challenger. So you speaking the sec- next Mac, like all these players that like they came, people don't know who they are until they're in the pro scene. You see them in the challenger scene before it happens. Like, Oh, that's golden for me. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. So, I mean, any other, any other final thoughts here, boys, this might wrap it up for us. Of course. I mean, we know how it goes. Shift, you're probably going to be our fourth guest as well. <laughs> you know? so, just just, just mark your calendars now. It's, it's, just, it's an ongoing <laughs> meme. I mean, we have to keep bringing you on. So um, just know you're welcome back at any point, my homie. And uh, we are excited to see you on the Challenge mm-hmm. broadcast. Of course, everybody else. I mean, how you know, like, what, what are you looking forward to as a whole with the broadcast? I mean, just final thoughts here. That is a a very wide spectrum of personalities. Yes. And I think you're going to see that come through. And I, I love when we get broadcast teams like that because you just you never know what to expect. And it's always for a good reason. So mm-hmm. I'm very excited to see how, again, we're, we're, we're running that in trios. So I think a lot okay. of people that will that have seen me cast before with Visions and Infinity, like I think you're going to know what to expect out of the three of us. Mm-hmm. But definitely, you know, be ready to watch everybody else because there's a lot of talent in that broadcast lineup for sure. Let's go. Um, and, and and then also beyond that, community stream not yes. done yet. Ooh, hey. The tease. Yep. <laughs> follow. I hold shift everywhere. Last time we said follow him down the street. You're following him everywhere. When he's shopping, <laughs> uh, you're following. Wait, don't follow him. Like I said, follow Hold him on Twitter. Follow him on Twitch. I hold shift. He's the man bringing bringing the knowledge to the scene, and we yes. all appreciate it. So mm. uh, again, follow him everywhere. Mm-hmm. We appreciate it, and that's gonna do it. We're on to the predictions for the Call of Duty kickoff. Of, well, not kickoff, but the opening the weekend. opening weekend. I think is what it's called. Let's get Atlanta. it, baby. Woo. Let's go. Thanks, Shift. You got it. Thanks for having me on, boys. Bye. Oh, that was one heck of a conversation, <laughs> wow. baby. Woo. We that definitely did not just, just cut from our right before to five seconds later. This. No, definitely not. Seamless. Seamless stuff. But it was an awesome one, man. Shout out Shift for coming on. Of course, like I said, go follow him quite literally mm-hmm. everywhere. Yes. No. Everywhere. Not follow everywhere. the COD Challengers YouTube. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so uh, there's a lot going on there, man. We're pretty excited about that. We'll be talking a lot more about that as well. And I'm sure Shift will make, a, make his fourth appearance mm-hmm. here sooner than later. I mean, at this we'll point, see. why not? So we'll see. Uh, with that said, we can roll into our our final talk of the day, which is uh, quite the talk. Mm-hmm. The CDL Atlanta prediction. So with that yeah. said, let's roll it. Let's go. <laughs> Oh my goodness, man. man. Finally, we get to do some official predictions. Let's go. So we're going to be going matchup by matchup from the beginning mm-hmm. to the end of the weekend and give our little predictions. We actually decided that we are going to be keeping track of our prediction records yes. the whole season and see how it goes. One of us is going to get embarrassed mm-hmm. and see how it goes. I don't know. Who knows? And <laughs> I mean, I'm sure as the season rolls along, it'll be pretty even, but you never mm-hmm. know. Maybe one of us will stand out. Who knows? You never but know. uh, it should be a blast. We're going we're to talk about some of the key factors and things like that. So uh, without further ado, I think we can get right into it. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess I'll probably have to edit. I'll just edit in. I Maybe picture. I don't know exactly how I'm going to do this. We're, we're, we have this nice little doc, but I have no way to show it currently. Oh, that's fine. Because I had to remake our whole system on OBS Streamlabs right before we started because the Streamlabs crashed. That was terrible. So I don't have a way to actually switch uh, scenes right now, which is unfortunate. Either. It's just it's just white text. But uh, oh, yeah. we'll uh, we'll start with the first match of the weekend, which is the Minnesota versus Los Angeles Thieves matchup. So uh, Rex, lead us off here. What are your thoughts? What comes to mind? Where are you sitting with this type of matchup with these two teams? And uh, what are you hoping? To, what are you hoping to see? Okay, so Minnesota versus LA Thieves. LA Thieves is kind of like that 
team that everyone thinks will be good, but then they just aren't <laughs> at all. We saw them in the kickoff get absolutely smacked. They've been and getting smacked kill another, in the back. In other ones too. And and, and then also the talk of like in their scrims, like everything seems to not be going LA Thieves way. It's very reminiscent, I think, of Optic Chicago of last year, which we have the core three You mean LA that. Optic. Or LA Optic, <laughs> yeah. Jeez. What did I say? Optic you Thieves You said Optic Chicago. Oh, yeah. LA, or LA Optic <laughs> from last year. It's all it doesn't good. matter Have anymore. The best They're of gone. Us. Trust me. Um, I'm going Minnesota. I think it's going to be a pretty decent Minnesota. I'm going to call it 3-1, though. Interesting. This is tough for me. Yeah, I... Do you buy into LA Thieves right now? I don't buy that they're horrible. That, okay. If that's a fair, fair yeah. thing to say. Horrible as in worst team in the league or horrible as in like third worst team in horrible the league? Horrible as in like... <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> as bad as they were at the kickoff? Yeah, I don't think they're as bad as that. There's a reason... See, there's a reason why they were picked second in the pool pickings. Were, yeah. Were they not? Yeah. Scrims, which goes to show that Scrims, they were like the top contender there. Then what happened? I don't know what happened. <laughs> they played horrible COD. It yeah. wasn't even like Optic just played great. Mm -hmm. That was not the case. Yeah. But mm. I'm, I'm also not like incredibly high on Minnesota as of right now. True. Um, so I honestly am thinking that this is going to be a three two Minnesota. Okay. I I I don't think it's gonna be three one. I think thieves do have some fight in them, but I think this will be a Minnesota um victory. Yeah, I'm leaning the Minnesota route as well. I, I guess we might be starting off on the same page here. Um I don't know, man. It's just like after the COD that I've seen LA Thieves play, I mean, we haven't seen a lot of them. I mean, basically, we saw them, you know, the, the few the few moments against uh, uh, against New York. Mm -hmm. But besides that, it's only been twice against Optic, basically, in scrims. Yeah. They haven't looked good. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Rocker have looked competitive, but by no means in the same tier as the top three or four teams right now. So it's like, I do agree that I think it's going to be a pretty close one. I think it's either 3-1 or 3-2. I'll go... I'll go, I'll go three one, three one mm -hmm. rocker here. If mm -hmm. anything, I think they lose the the control. That's what I was gonna say too. I think if it's gonna be the control, ah, it could be the second hard point as well. But yeah, it, one of the it'd be interesting. I could see it going either way. Um, but I'll go three one. All right. Next matchup: Seattle Surge versus Dallas Empire. Mm. I mean, yeah, uh, I mean, three zero. Are you going hot three O's across the board here? I'm going hot three O. I just, I think Seattle's got some work to do. I think it's very, very obvious. And Dallas doesn't have a lot of work to do. <laughs> I mean, <they're> just, <laughs> Dallas is a pretty well-oiled oil, machine already, considering, again, they are pretty much the same team, minus Clayster. Um, they looked dominant in the opening weekend, and I think this is just the way it's going to go. So, yeah, hot 3 out for me. Man, three zero for me as well. I think Dallas is just gonna roll through Seattle. I'm, it's, I'm curious about how well Pristini is gonna play, especially going against Shotzi and Illy. Mm -hmm. Um, because Pristini, he he shows some life, I think, in the kickoff after the first map. Granted, um, and I'm just, I'm, I'm watching Pristini to see if maybe his consistency goes up now. Um, yeah, but yeah, I mean, Dallas three zero. This is a good opportunity for Seattle to like. You know, if they can show up here and then you're like suddenly, oh, OK, all right, mm -hmm. maybe Seattle's got some more life than we gave him credit for in the first place. Yeah. Right now, it's hard. to. I mean, how do you how do you pick them at this point? I know. I mean, picking them to win the series w would be basically mm -hmm. impossible. Yeah. I mean, three ones, not the craziest thing ever by any means. Like you could snag a map. S, mm -hmm. S and D is still such a toss up right now. Yeah. But you, I have you have so much faith in Dallas to play good search and destroy at this point that like and they have Illy. I mean, yeah, Illy, Krim, you know, the, those guys You're exist. talking about S&D. They got Illy on their team. <laughs> like, game over. Man. I mean, seriously, against oh, Seattle, I just don't see them being able to take that S&D. Yeah, that's the thing. And so it's like you're looking at, like, it's hard to imagine they win a map right now. So I, I agree a 3-0 makes the most sense. But um, I'm hoping – I'd be really excited to see Seattle make something mm -hmm. happen there. All right, next match. Paris versus uh, good old Chicago, huh? We really have some mm, interesting ones here. I know. Man, I there there is something to be said about Paris um, 
their what what they showed at an opening weekend. Oh yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to this. Yeah. Um, mm. my my only thing that I'm considering here is if Paris will take a map or not. That's kind of what yeah. I'm debating. Yeah. I mean, if they're taking a map, it's going to be S and D. Mm-hmm. It ain't going to be hard point no. or control. There's no, especially yeah. not hard point. I yeah. mean, Optic has looked unbeatable in hard point mm-hmm. recently, basically. Yeah. Um, supposedly, they, they in their scrim, they went 5-4 with Dallas recently. Mm-hmm. And you go back and watch their most recent scrims, they have looked really good in Just hard point. really good. Very solid. Yeah. <sighs> it, it's been tough. So, I mean, for but me, it's S&D like... their S and D is like... I mean, Envoy. Oh, there's just, tons of questions with S and D, but I Envoy, know. you just trust him, you know. I know. That's the thing. I'm I'm going three zero. I, I think at this point, it's like it's it's hard to 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 bet against them right now. So it could be a pretty fast start to the day here if a three one three zero three zero in my book for the CDL. We could be on pace for a yeah. pretty quick day on Thursday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I do think it's gonna be three zero two. Honestly, I just. Oh, I'm sorry. Those, yeah. This is the fr- the first Friday match. There's only two matches on Thursday. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm also going Chicago 3-0 against Paris. Tough scenes for Paris, though. I think Paris has potential to really get better. <laughs> but going against the Chicago right now, especially with the chemistry, I think Chicago has built, which I think is the best we've seen, well, at least from Modern Warfare and even Black Ops 4. Like, they have some really good chemistry right now with the squad. Yeah. Um, and Paris, I think, also has potential for good chem. But Chicago's is just top-notch right now. Um, I think it'll be a three zero. Yeah, that's the thing. It's just like they're the real deal. Where's right now. the where's the the weak chain right now for for optic? And you're like, I mean, you just have to right. you'd have to give the narrative of S and D, but you don't you're not scared of Paris and S and D. So that's mm-hmm. the thing. So, um, LAG plays both their matches back to back here. They have the last match on yeah. Friday and the first match on Saturday. It is interesting. That's weird. So LA phase play, or phase plays the gorillas here. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on, man. We're just asking for three O's right I now, know. right? I know, However, I, I know. but there's something just to say about apathy though here. Okay. Yep. Apathy. Papa app. Went, went pretty hard. Yeah. I, th- I think it's safe to say that he's got a lot of life left in him. Um, yeah, but, but then again, he's <laughs> going it, against phase. Again, the only thing you're beating phase in is right now is S and D based off what we saw at the yeah. kickoff event. But again, yeah. they've had a week and a half to practice. I'm sure they've been scrimming S. They've been scrimming AM teams all week. Yeah. Um, in S and D, so it's like, I, I, how do you? I I can't pick against this. Mm-hmm. Normally, I hate picking three O's, but I'm going to go another three mm-hmm. O. I'm going to go phase three O for LAG here. I'm I might for for the sake of it. I, I'm going to go three one. I think really? LAG has a, has, a, has potential. Which mode? It's gotta be S and D, don't you think? You're, you're telling me. Unless Pop App just goes ham bone and controller or something like that. S and D would make the most sense mm, by far. Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna go Atlanta three one. Bold. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm gonna go. It's Atlanta. just so hard to say three three O's in a row. Like, that's yeah, that seems pretty rare. Pretty crazy. It's pretty rare. Me. Yeah. And I'm going to continue on with the trend. I think it's going to be Atlanta 3-0. Uh, oh, we mean Rex are just hand in hand so, right now. So with, you know, with Los Angeles Gorillas. Hand in pants. If, <laughs> if Los Angeles Gorillas take some map, I'll have more faith in them. Yeah. I'll be impressed if they take the map and be like, okay, they, they are able to compete up there with these big dogs, which means they're going to be able to compete in that middle of the pack range where I think a lot of us have question marks about them. Most of us are saying they're near the bottom, but if they can take a map off a of phase, that means they have a little bit of life that they can show and at least make middle of the pack runs. So, uh, but I don't think that'll happen. I think it'll be Atlanta 3 0. If it 3 1 does happen, it's because Apathy went donk mode. Uh, it's just, I just, yeah, that would be, it would be pretty surprising. At the end, we're going to talk about a few, like, you know, the what if scenarios, <laughs> um, some things that you would like to see or would be pretty cool to see. So maybe we can we can have some of that in there as well. Um, okay. So here's LAG's other match against Paris. This LAG v match. Paris this is our best match yet. Yeah, no, this, this is, is, is going to be a great match. So what are your thoughts, Sam? Yeah. So I, what I was going through, kind of like the battle of the X factors here. I think you got fire and app. Mm-hmm. Okay. Fire on Paris. Um, we saw some great things from him um, opening weekend. And then, of course, apathy just blew me away. I, I just, I, I just didn't think. Lots of apathy talk today. I know. I, well, I honestly good. was really very. Good, yeah. I was very, very impressed with it. Like, like he was probably like top three, like 
most crazy moments of that weekend were just like apathy going off. Like what? Yeah. Y- you know? Yeah. So yeah, I think it's going to be those two guys you're going to want to watch are fire, fire 40 and then apathy. Um, but in terms of who pulls this out, you, you kind of, mm, I don't know. <laughs> it's not easy. No, my I, heart, my heart's leaning LAG. I, I just wanted to say my heart's leaning Paris. Ooh, okay, okay. Um, I like it. I'm gonna go with the Paris three two. I'm surprised. American. If anything, I would take Paris three one. Really? I think yeah. like LAG's got the advantage in the S and D. In the S and D. Rex thoughts? Really? I I went. I'm going Paris three two for this one. Ooh, okay. The S and D's is where. It, I think it's going to come down to, and for some reason, I just feel the heart of Paris beating hard and able to pull it out um, with some crazy plays. I think Paris has potential to have one of those teams that like they really are going to be friends in and out of game, and that's always a recipe for success. Um, and I have high hopes for this Paris team, to be honest. I don't think they're going to be the worst team in the league. Yeah, I mean, the connection, this will be interesting for, like, the connection experiment for LAG and how that plays out with all of them, you know, quad stacking in California. You know how their hosts play out? I think there's, like, a, did they say Utah host or a, something along in the mountainous mm-hmm. regions of the country. The mountainous. The, mm-hmm. uh, that there's a host there, so that probably will be where a lot of their matches are played. Mm-hmm. So... I don't know, man. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Lag three one and and bank on this team playing pretty good COD. That'll be a fun match. That's the one I'm most excited for so far out of all the ones you talked about, and the one that probably is the toughest to pick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot to learn in this match, which is fun because yeah. both these teams like feel like we don't. No one has a great grasp of how these teams are gonna perform this mm-hmm. season. So that'll be a really yeah. fun match. And Paris is always is gonna be an exciting team to watch. At least for me, I just love watching Paris play. And the yeah. thing too is like you have LAG where the players I feel like are they're not playing from a place of like they're friends and buddy buddy with each other. They're, I feel like they're playing from a place of like they're trying to kind of save their reputations. Yeah. And I don't know if that's necessarily that will give you some bit of fire, but I don't think it's the <laughs> right type of fire you want where you're going to be trying Honey. to play for highlight reels. <laughs> Whereas Paris, I don't, they already are kind of known as like we're on Paris, we're the meme team, no one cares about us. And in a way that gives them that freedom to just do whatever they want and like, and play well. So I, I don't know, I see a Paris 3-2 out of this. Yeah. That'd be dope. That'd be dope. Um, all right, let's move on to the Florida-Toronto match then. Mm-hmm. This is an interesting one as well because it's kind of like, you know, Toronto's kind of like in that like middling like contender, potential contender tier, but like mm-hmm. it's hard to kind of figure out what they are. We know Florida's at least pretty legit. And like, you know, I'm sure some people would have them as a top three team right now. Um, mm-hmm. In my mind, I would still put at, in my power rankings video today, I gave Atlanta the edge over them just because the S&D was the new meta when they played mm-hmm. back in the kickoff event. And they, they lost both S&Ds to Florida in the yeah. kickoff event. Um, so, I don't know. Uh, Rex, take us away with this one. What are your thoughts on this Toronto-Florida match? Toronto versus Florida. I'm thinking Florida 3-1. Toronto has always been that brick wall team where like they it's, they're just always difficult for everybody, but yeah. they never really end up taking it. But since we're so early on in the league and Florida has been looking really strong, uh, I see Toronto being able to take a map off them, but then Florida is just going to sweep it with that three one, I think. Because Florida's okay. Florida. Okay. And they're strong. Yeah. I know. Yeah. It just all, all depends on Neptune. Truly. <laughs> like, does it? I mean, like, like he was so good. Yeah. So dang good. Can he replicate that performance? Yeah, I mean, in my head, it's like, right. I don't know if it really matters. Because I think no matter what's going to happen, we know that uh, that uh, Awakening and Skies are going mm-hmm. to be nasty. True. And yeah. so it's like, I don't really see a world where they slow down. Mm-hmm. At this point, they're like locked and loaded, it feels like. And so the question is, can Neptune and Slack just be solid? I think they yeah. can. And so, and there's still upside with Neptune to be like a legit playmaker. Mm-hmm. I mean, we saw flashes of it in the kickoff event. Yeah. But by no means did he like ever take over a match, you yeah. know, but um, S- Neptune just looked very, very good. Very good. And yeah. uh, Slack had great moments as well. So I, I might just buy into the, the Florida is legit hype. Mm-hmm. It's either, I, it's either about, a 3 1 or 3 0 for me. What about, so, but Bance though, 
I mean, is Bands going to be able to replicate what he did at the kickoff? That's a question too. And will Kleenex and Cammy be able to up their game to what they know they can play at? Right. You know, Tor- Toronto played against uh, against the Rocker in their kickoff event. Of course, Florida played against FaZe. Um, and Bance looked incredible in that. And so that's the question. I, I'm not necessarily going to buy in at this point. I'm taking Florida in a... I'm going to... I'm gonna, I'm gonna go bold. I'm gonna go three zero. I have four three zeros at this point. Well, this is so not me. I never pick three zeros. Yeah, I'm, so, uh, I'm going with three one here, Florida. Um, yeah, I mean three one feels most likely. Yeah, I yeah because I do feel flow flow. That's how you abbreviate Florida. I that's how I'm abbreviating Florida. <laughs> flow. Yeah, it's all good. It doesn't really flow rider. Ever heard of that? Yeah, yeah, Florida, yeah, you know, that is how I'm it hip. goes. I'm hip with the It kids. is weird that the abbreviation is FLA, but you spell Florida F L O. Like what? That makes no sense. Anyway, uh, yeah, I think that's gonna be a fun one. In a world where Toronto, like Toronto, could show up though, that'd be really, really interesting. I, maybe we'll talk about that in a second. Um, all right, next one: New York, L.A. Thieves. Another really. This actually is a really fun this match. Is this is a fun, fun match. The three O kids. Yes. Yes, and this is the Saturday night match. Mm-hmm. Thoughts on this one, Rex? Clayster? I know, dude. This is kind of a tough one for me because I think a, the sentiment is that New York and LA Thieves are kind of bottom of the barrel teams right now. I don't want to buy into that. Um, and again, but LA Thieves has that potential upside that we know they do. And New York, I think, also has that potential upside. And New York has that potential to have that strength within them. Have they accomplished that by now? I don't know. And and LA Thieves is going to be pretty mad probably after getting destroyed. Um, <laughs> by the rocker? Yeah. <laughs> so they're going to want to make a statement like, we're not the worst team. But New York is <laughs> I a love moment the moment to prove themselves. So I'm going to go with New York on this one. Okay, okay. In uh, Because I think LA Thieves has potential to just kind of be tilted from it all and kind of not do that great. In New York, I think they're really just working on finding their grounding, and they have a little bit of a ground covered, I think. Um, yeah. So I'm going New York, and I'm, I'll go... It's, I don't think it's going to go to a, a game five. I think it's going to be a 3-1 New York. Dang, okay. Mm. Sam? Yeah, you know, Diamond Con was holding his ground. He was yeah. like a... They definitely weren't a put-together team, though. No. Well, I mean, who I'm worried about, Asim. That's who I'm worried about. Hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. he's got, you know, the hard counter, T, so... There is some... There is, a, <laughs> there is an argument to say that Clayster could be potentially the best player on that team. Dude, he's pretty good. People... We'll see. We'll see. Um, I am not a... I am more down on New York than I am LA Thieves at this point. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> nice way um, of putting it. Yeah. Um, I think this is going to be... I think this is going to be a 3-1, 3-1 LA, LA Thieves. Thieves. Yeah, that's exactly where I am too, man. <laughs> but dude, here's the thing. New York was like this close to taking a control against the Empire. Like they were competing with Empire that, and they easily could have ended up winning that control if... You know, certain players didn't really kind of mess up a little bit. And <laughs> like, <laughs> if they're competing like that with the Empire, mm, mm, I imagine who they're going to compete against when they're playing against the LA Thieves, who are not that, like, who we've seen have not shown. Oh, to be no, that this, great. this is very winnable. I mean, both of these teams have put mm-hmm. each other in the body bags in scrims lately. Yeah. So it, it is going to be interesting. <sighs> Again, if, 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 if the Thieves go, you know, like, 0-2 in, in these series and they win like two maps in total like pfft, I'm going to be they'll probably be the worst team in the CDL yeah. so th- this means a lot to them I and mean, we're going to have to learn a lot about them in that first rocker match and after we see how they play there if they get smoked 3-0 in that rocker match I would take the subliners but I think they're going to it's going to be at least a 3-1 it'll be pretty competitive so I'm going to go I'm, I'm going to go LA Thieves here 3-1 as well they're going to it's going to be that learning experience in that first match coming mm-hmm. off of like that first event they're gonna the narratives are gonna come out here, shoot a lot straighter this time around, play a little bit more fundamental Call of Duty, and, and beat the subliners who definitely aren't playing the most fundamental Call of Duty yet at this yeah. point. So uh, that's what we'll go with that one. Yeah. Our last two matchups here. You think LA Thieves are playing fundamental Call of Duty? No, I'm just saying that that New York isn't playing fundamental Call of Duty either. 
So like, right. then it comes down to like more skill based, and I trust the, the thieves a little bit more in that sense. So that's kind of where I'm at with it. Well, when you let Envoy sit in the back line and just run around and not <laughs> no, go after him, you just let him stay there and just keep running. Like, that's not fundamental cod at all. New York subliners at least would have gone to try and get rid of that. Agreed, that's agreed. All I'm that's all so I'm saying. We got our last three Sunday matchups here. Uh, London versus Seattle. <laughs> Thoughts on this one, Sam? Man, this would be another interesting one. I another think. fun one. It is. The bottom, of, the bottom barrel teams, yeah. supposedly. So this is going to be the first time London's playing? Yep. Parasite's and debut. Parasite's debut. So that's going to be really exciting. Um, but do I trust them yet with the recent change of Parasite <laughs> versus Seattle? Do you trust them? I don't trust them. I don't <laughs> After trust they hit play team. Dallas, we're going to learn nothing about them against the, in the Dallas game. That's the that's problem. That's the thing is like there's not much to be said there. This is where we learn about these teams. Mm-hmm. But even then, it's like, ah, oh, man. It's yeah. tough. I kind of want to give the edge to seattle here for some reason um <laughs> nice <laughs> for some reason um it is tough there's not much data to go off of with either no. of these teams that's the problem yeah no they none of them really give away their scrims at yeah all. yeah i i'm leaning uh i'm leaning london three two but i don't feel good about that no. <laughs> this is probably one of the most difficult match to predict out of any of them this whole weekend what are you going with, Sam? I may just take Seattle three two. I like ooh Seattle clutching up some messy yeah. things you love to see. Yeah, to me it seems like it's just mm, yeah. There's not much to go off. Of I here. mean, who, I mean, in the in control, I would give Seattle the advantage. Hard mm-hmm. point is hard to say. I mean, I feel I can mm-hmm. see those getting split one one. S and D's. I probably favor London a little bit. Um, and so then the question is, is like. Okay, who, you know who clutches up in those in those moments? I'll mm-hmm. take London three two. That's that's kind of where I'm at. Rex, uh, I think Parasite's gonna be coming out with the fire. Parasite, <laughs> he is gonna want to the like Parasite he's gonna feel sim. like he has to win this right. Like this will uh, like really get him a good grounding of what's going on. He's early on with that team. He hasn't scrimmed as long as Seattle had. Seattle has that strength. Pristini has been kind of a killer, and London subline has been lackluster from what we've seen so far. Um. I am going to go London 3-1. Wow. I think the S&Ds are, it's, it's a tough call. If it goes with game five s and I just don't know how much I trust London on it. But I don't know how much I trust Seattle either. <laughs> like I said, this is a really tough matchup to predict. I, just There's so little data to base mm-hmm. off of. It's like based, oh mm-hmm. yeah, it's really tough, man. I, so I don't out of like way. a pure heart, yeah. I'm going with okay. London. London that. for this one. Now in our final two matchups, we got Dallas versus the Minnesota Roca. Rex, thoughts on this one? Um, I think we're all probably going to end up picking Dallas for this one. I do think Minnesota will put some chinks in the armor, though. Okay. okay. Um, I think it will end up being a 3-1 Dallas. I was considering a 3-2, to be honest. Um, but I'm going to go 3-1 Dallas. But Minnesota is going to put up a fight against them more than Empire might be underestimating them a little bit. Um, mm. So I'm going Dallas 3-1. I just really think that there's right now, the gap's going to close, but I think there's just a big tier difference between these top four teams, Dallas, Florida, Chicago, and Atlanta, and the rest of the, the competition. I might just take another Dallas 3-0 here. It, I wouldn't blame you. I mean, would a, three, would a 3-1 be surprising? No. no. I mean, they could probably steal an S&D, maybe a control. But I, I just trust, I trust Dallas in every single game mode multiple mm-hmm. times more than I do with Minnesota at this point. Mm-hmm. And, right. and, and from what we've seen, it's like I, at this point, you know, Minnesota's looked fine, but they by no means have looked impressive in mm-hmm. any scrim. Or we saw they looked decent against Toronto in the series, but they weren't dominant by any means. Mm-hmm. And, and this is why yeah. I just don't have any confidence to take them at all. So I'll let Dallas just have their way with them. 3-0. And, and Dallas has Illy, so oh what are you supposed to do? <laughs> Oh my word! <laughs> and now we got the final matchup of the weekend. Of course, by far the best matchup. It's Ugh. not even close of the weekend. Chicago oh, yeah. versus Atlanta to, to end it off. This was pure chance that they happened to play on the last pure week. chance. Just wow! What are the coincidence? You know what are the odds here? All right, Sam, kick us off. Horny for Formy. What's for happening in this one? Atlanta versus Chicago. Who you got? Man, so. 
What do we know? We know Chicago is looking just scarily good right now. In response. In response. Just complete teamwork. Vibes are high. Vibes are high. Vibes are real high. high. Faze lost to Mutineers yep. opening weekend. Yep. yep. I think they 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 may have gotten a little bit of a wake up call there. Like, hey. But again, it was the S and Ds. They lost two yeah. S and Ds. I I have to keep mm-hmm. emphasizing that because yeah. on the new meta, like people are like bodying Faze for losing to Florida. Like they they suck. Mm-hmm. But like it was on a new meta S and D, and it's like, come on, man. Yeah. They're Atlanta, like bro. No. They're gonna they're gonna bounce back. Yeah. I don't know. This is no. tough for me. Yeah. No. This is hard because both of them are just so incredibly talented. Oh, for sure. And honestly, any game could go either way. I mean, truly, they, it could. Yeah, I mean, this is going to mean a lot to both these guys. I mean, you know that this is going to be, I mean, even in the, in the long term of things, this is an important mm-hmm. match Yeah. when it comes down to the seeding, even for the home series, you know, or for the, yeah. for the major. So, yeah. yeah. Part of me wants to give, just because it's early in the season, Chicago yeah. comes out hot, part of me wants to give them 3-2 win. Yeah. And so that's what I'm going to do. Okay. All right. Rex? I'm also going to go Chicago 3-2 for this one. Um, it, yeah, just Chicago has been looking uh, really impressing me, honestly. And I put Chicago usually on like a more tighter scope because they are who they are. Oh, yeah. But they really have been really, really Man. impressive. It's hard not to go um, with the hype train. It's hard not to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not the hype train. It's legitimate. In Chicago, three <laughs> two is I, I think I guess, could definitely happen. But I yeah, don't know, man. I'm going Chicago three two. Yeah, I see Chicago Chica- just looks solid. Like, I see Chicago winning the clean. first hard point. Then I see I see Faze probably snagging the S and D. Then it comes down to the control, and I, you got to give Chicago the advantage at this point. I mean, we don't really know how the vetoes are going to work for this. I. That's mm-hmm. something that we don't know yet with probably just a, probably a coin toss, I'd imagine. Probably. So that's hard to kind of predict whose map's going to be whose picks at this point. So at this point, I, w- I would lean that way. Um, and so if they're splitting 1-1, then it's 2-1. Uh, Chicago would have the opportunity to close it out 3-1 in a hard point. Three, a game five feels inevitable, and I could see Faye stealing a 3-2 here in Search and Destroy as Optic trying to improve in Search and Destroy. We don't really know how much either of these teams have practiced S&D, and that's the problem why it's so hard to predict these kickoff events, mm-hmm. especially with, with uh, just the, the meta. And we only saw, and we saw one event in S&D on a brand new meta, which makes it so tough to, to use as data for, for this, these predictions. It's hard to be a team twice in a game mode. So I agree. I'm going to go Chicago 3-2 as well. That does. Mm-hmm. We're all yeah. on board there, which I hate when that happens. But <laughs> which, I mean, who's the smarter team? That's hard to say at this point. Chicago. I think Chicago is the smarter team. Maybe. I think Envoy is an excellent leader for his squad. Um, I don't know if that's a given, I though. Mean, that, I mean, on, Chicago that they're, that they're really a smarter lived team. Shape. The S&D is like the one that would concern me the most. They were trash at S&D at the beginning of last season. Right, but this is a new season and a new Optic Chicago here. Oh, I agree. Like, I agree. And I think they've probably been working on it, and maybe the S&Ds, like, who knows? But I think that we'll be able to take at least one of the S&Ds. Um, but yeah, Chicago 3-2, it just makes sense to me. Chicago just seems like a smarter team to me. I and mean, we saw last year, FaZe was so good at S&D at the beginning of the season. Like, the first half, the first four or five months, they were incredible in S&D. So it's like, in my mind, like, I think FaZe could win this 3-2. This is like a, basically as close of a toss-up game as it gets. Um, but yeah, I'll stick with my Chicago 3-2 prediction, but I don't feel good about it. Hmm. So huh. um, is there any matchup that you guys feel like, you know, what's one that you would love to see go the opposite way? Or what's one, what's one thing that you would just love as a fan to see this weekend or to learn this weekend about a player? What, 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 or, wow. Ooh. What else is there that were something that you want to see? Um, I I really do want to see Seattle improve. Um, I think I think the roster could be a really fun roster. Um, yeah. You know, like just just with like Gunless and Looney, uh, Looney. Um, Gunless, I feel like he's I feel like he's underrated, but 
there's a good reason for it. Like, like, like he really hasn't shown a whole lot since being like so dominant in Black Ops Four, like at the very beginning. Right. And and it's quite the shame. But I don't know. I would love to see success for Pristini. I would love to see success mm-hmm. for Octane too. I think Octane's killing it. Um, but yeah, it's just a matter of is if they can come together as a team and get their act together. So I I'd love for them to win it their their games, but I wasn't too confident in that in that London uh game. <laughs> right. Honestly. That's thing. So we'll see. Yeah, I think for me it's I would love to see just you know the hype beast inside of me, of course. Yes, of course. Would, would love to see LA Thieves get back to being a contender again, mm-hmm. which would require them to beat Minnesota and beat New York. Yep. So seeing mm-hmm. them go two and zero would be pretty cool, I think, for the sake of competitive COD, yeah, and uh, just the viewership as a whole. So that's something I would definitely like to see. I don't think it's very likely, but uh, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm down for something like that. Rex, New York, New York, New York. I want to see <laughs> them be way better. Um, like I just really hope there's some life in there. I don't want, I, I don't want all that just to like go down the drain like this. Like, it's there. Like and I, I hope they can pull yeah. something together and really make it work. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Sam, would you want to see a Neptune go full beast mode and oh. just dominate? Oh, I'd be so happy. Just drop nukes. Nothing would make me happier than for <laughs> Neptune just to go off and just show the world. Show the world who's oh. boss. Oh my word. Show, but oh. show Krim. Yeah. Show Krim. Yeah. <laughs> ATS. Yeah, right at Krim. That'd be that'd be wild. Parasite as well. I want to see Parasite like yeah. I, I hope Parasite is like the best on his team. To be honest, <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah, I'll be doing some watch parties. I'm not exactly sure which ones. It's weird. I'm gonna have to figure out my video mm-hmm. schedule it's for this. Weird. I, with all the afternoon matches, I don't know what I'm gonna do now. That's four days of the week: Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's like throw such, throw such a wrench in my video mm-hmm. schedules. So we'll have to figure out how to work around that one. It's but a strange um, one. again, draft buff. Mm-hmm. Shout out draft Woo! buff. Draft buff. Go hit the link. Drop a. You know, join the Draft Royale, and we're doing our giveaway, announcing yes. our giveaway today for the merch mm-hmm. winner. Do you have the name right here? I have the name. Drum roll. Drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> winner is Tandem. Tandem. T A N T X M. Pretty cool. I like it. Who wanted some face gear? He's gonna be rocking the fire so, face gear. Congrats. The winner of our tandem. of our. Uh, giveaway here so shout out we wanted to do something again we'll probably do another one we said as well the winner of the listener league will get, will get some sort of merch as well yeah. and so uh we'll reach out to him hopefully when these orders start going live we can get that to tandem so shout yes. out tandem again shout out draft buff for sh- yes. supporting the show Thank hit you. the link down in the description shout out i hold shift for yes. coming on and joining us and this shout was pretty long this ended up being a pretty dang long hey, episode so there's Sam, a lot to talk about thanks for staying up all night for this one buddy rex you as well fighting it out but as always guys we appreciate you guys for tuning in drop a comment down below on youtube drop a you know a review on apple podcast yes, uh, we you always know, love those we always do appreciate those reviews every single week we appreciate those five stars of course follow us on twitter at salvation lee at bachelor number three and at shady nero but as always guys this is the best three quality towards podcasting guys we will see you next time we out what's that <laughs> <laughs>